Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Dylan and in this one we're taking a look at some previous math stats questions that are built to trick you. They're built to lead you down a path where you're going to end up rushing into an answer that you end up figuring out is incorrect. Then you have to either get the question wrong or waste loads of time fixing what you've done. Let me show you exactly what I mean with these question types. I'm actually going to start off with a question where it's less of a trap but I'm gonna show you what children might do to get these wrong. Tick the numbers that are factors of both 54 and 72. So if you dive straight into this question quickly, you might just be thinking of 54. Uh, yeah, it's even, so it's in the two times table. Is it in the three times table? A quick trick to figure out if a number is in the three times table, add the digits up, five plus four is nine. That's in the three times table, so I know that 54 is in the three times table. Is it in the fours? Well, using my times table knowledge, 12 fours are 48. Add another four is 52. Add another four is 56. No, skip it. Eight times table. Is uh, 54 in the eight times table? Well, I know 64 is in the eight times table. So 10 less can't be. I'm gonna skip that one. And then nines, nines into 54. Yeah, nine times six is 54. You might rush through and do this and not really take into account whether or not 72 is or isn't one of the answers that means we can tick the boxes so we're just going to go through and check it 72 yeah it, okay it's in the two times table is it in the three times table seven plus two is nine so yes is it in the four times table well 80 is in the four times table 76 72 i can count back in fours yes eight okay is eight in uh is it eight times table does that have 72 yeah nine times eight is 72 and guess what we just said nine times eight. So it's going to be nine as well. So this is an example of where you rushing into answering the question and only thinking about the first number. It will in fact get you the right answer. Okay. Because all of them are in the uh, are factors, sorry, of 72. So this is an example where, yeah, you can rush in, but imagine for a, for a minute that whatever number was second, imagine it wasn't in the three times table. If you were to just dive straight into the question and tick three because the first number, yep, okay, 54, cool, three is a factor of 54. Well, you haven't checked the second one. Okay, so this is a weird middle ground where, you know, I wouldn't be rushing in, I'd be checking both as we go, but weirdly, you'd still get the question right. This, again, is the ultimate example of pointless information in a test question. Let's have a look. Chen has these digit cards, four, eight, two, and seven. She uses three of these cards to make a three digit number. Okay. Each card can only be used once. Right. Okay. This is vital information. If you just ran along and went, okay, um, using these cards, three digit number, I want to make, okay, that's cool. I'm bored. I'm just going to read this bit here, write the lowest three digit number. Well, there's a two, so it's obviously just two, two, two. No, You've got to read the question really carefully. Don't just dive in and make a mistake. Read it. Each card can only be used once. Right, okay, so the two, if I'm making the lowest three-digit number, the two's going to go here. Cool. Now if we use the two, now what's my next lowest digit? Well, it's a four, okay, and then it's a seven. So two, four, seven is the answer. Right, cool, awesome. Yeah, but look where we could have made a fatal error. Look, Chen puts the four in the tens place. Now again, this is an example of a question where we're lucky. We could have completely ignored this extra bit of information and we'd still have got the question right. But imagine if this question said, Chen puts a eight in the tens place. Well, that would make our answer wrong because we rushed in just to do the lowest number and we didn't read the question carefully. If that had said Chen puts an eight in the tens place, well, our answer would have to then be an eight goes here first, then I do the lowest digit cards, a two and a four. But again, luckily for us, the test writers were kind, and even though they kind of started to lay a trap, they did it in a way where it didn't matter too much. But guess what? That isn't always what happens. Let's take a look at this example. William has four parcels. Write the masses in order, starting with the heaviest. So obviously heaviest, I'm gonna rush in because I'm thinking quick, quick in the sats paper, I wanna to get to the rest of the questions. Heaviest means biggest. What's the biggest number here? Uh, 1,500 is clearly the biggest number. And then I get rid of that one. And then 300 is the next biggest number. And then two, and then 1.4, done. No, this is where we will get the answer incorrect if we just rush in and don't read the question carefully. Now we're gonna to have to go back and fix it. But if we just went more slowly in the first place and were more attentive, 
we'd see the units here. So before we do any comparisons of ordering or anything like that, I'm going to make these all into grams. So 1.4 kilograms is 1,400 grams. This is already in grams. Two kilograms is 2,000 grams. And then this one's in grams. Now I'm going to order it. And now suddenly you'll see the heaviest becomes two kilograms. So here I'm going to have to put two kg with my units as well. Tick it off. Next, I've got 1,004, 1,000, okay, it's 1,500 grams comes next. Then 300 or 1,400, well, clearly it's going to be the 1.4 kilogram box. And then finally the 300 gram box. So that's the most common way that we see rushing into an, uh, answering a question goes wrong is when there are units to convert. We're going to dive into some more now where you'll really start to see how they can waste a lot of time. But first, a quick message from me, Top Dog Tutoring. It's what Hayden and I do. It's why we do these videos for you guys. We love making lessons for you guys to watch and get better at maths and English and reasoning and all that good stuff. So you, if you scan this code, if you're watching this on a television or you can go down to the description and look at the link, you'll be taken to our website where you see our preparation resources. We have hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of video lessons and all different strands of maths, all different strands of English. And if you're preparing for the 11 plus, all of those verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning too. But you can see here, look, year six sats. That's what this video is all about. And you can see this is just a snippet of some of the uh, lessons that we have. Fraction problems, Shakespeare we do in English for a bit. That's really cool. Percentage of amounts. Everything you can think of is all there. If you scan that QR code or click the link below, it will take you to this page where if you sign up for a free account, you will get access to some lessons for absolutely nothing. And this is what they look like. You can see there, there's Hayden doing a maths lesson for you guys. I do a bunch of lessons too. So it's both Hayden and I splitting the lessons equally. And then you'll see there's a homework that goes of each individual lesson. So hundreds of sheets of practice there available. And if you're thinking, how do I get that marked? Well, there's a walkthrough as well where Hayden or I get the homework and we answer every question and show you how to do it much like these videos. So if you enjoy these videos, I do recommend scanning this QR code above me or clicking down the link below, joining our website, making an account for absolutely nothing and you will get access to lessons straight away. And if you want more because you like what you see, you can get access to that too. Thanks for listening. Let's dive straight back into this question. Here are six number cards. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Use all six cards to complete the three multiplications below. So we've got six gaps and six cards. Awesome. So I know I've only got to use one twice. How can I make 24? Well, straight away, four and six make 24. So I'm going to tick those off. Nice one. How can I make 28? Oh, I can't. And this is the most common uh, question I see where children get punished for rushing into an answer. This here is not the correct answer. Even though four times six is 24, if you put them in this box, you would get this question wrong. It is as simple as that. Because, let me tell you why. There are two different ways we can make 24. Four times six, sure, that's one way. But there is another combination that can make 24, and that is three times eight. Now, whenever we get a situation where there's more than one option, we're just gonna skip the top one. We don't have to start with the top one. If we rush straight in and just guess, 50-50 chance that we're gonna end up getting the question wrong or having to go back and waste time fixing it. So we're just gonna go to the next one down here. How many different ways can we make 28? Well, luckily for us, there's only one way that we can make 28, and that is by doing seven multiplied by four. As soon as we know there's only one way to make a number, we can write it in. And look what's happened here. If we'd rushed in and written four times six, we would notice straight away after that we need that four for the second line. Don't rush into questions uh, because it's gonna sometimes shut you off to the right answer. So now I know the four's been used, I'm going to cross it out, which means I can't use the four here. Now I've only got one option for the top. There's only one, make, one way to make 24 out of what's left and it's three times eight. I'm going to close those off. And now because we've taken our time and had a strategy to answer this question, it should be the only two remaining work. Five and six, yes. Five multiplied by six is 30. So that is a very real, the best example I can see of rushing into a question and getting it wrong, even though what you've written down is correct. You've written down six times four is 24. That's not wrong, is it? But we needed to put down that it was three times eight to free up the four for another question. Here's another very similar example. I'd love you to have a go yourself and just think to yourself this. 
how many different ways or how many different numbers are there I can put into the first gap. If there's more than one, skip it and come back to it. So pause the video whenever you want and have a go yourself because I'm going to go through the question and answer right now. Here are four numbers. 40, 60, 64, and 100. Use each number once. Okay, so I can't reuse the number. That's important to complete these statements. Blank is a square number. Okay, now I know I'm not going to rush into just putting 64 in because I can see 40 isn't, 60 isn't, but 64 is. 8 times 8 is 64. So I'm going to put 64. No, I'm not going to do that because I know now I've got my strategy. I'm going to check is there more than one option. So 64 could work, but guess what? So could 100 because 100 is 10 times 10. So that's a square number. So because I've got the option of two, I'm going to leave it for now and go to the next one. Mm, is a cube number. Well, 40 is not a cube number, neither is 60, but 64, that is a cube number. Four cubed, four times four times four. Four times four is 16, times four is 64. So 64 is an option. And is 100 a cube number? No. 10 cubed would be a thousand. So now I've only got one possible answer. And you can see why if I rushed and put 64 as a square number, I would be in a situation where I've messed up. So this has to be 64. It's the only option, which means now if I can only use each one once, I can cross them all out. And I've actually worked out the top one because now there's only 100 left that can be a square number. So I'm going to repeat the process now with 40 and 60 left down the bottom is a common multiple of four and five. Well, 40 goes into 4 10 times, and it goes into 5 8 times. So I could rush and write 40, but we know we're not going to do that. Because guess what? 60 also goes into 4 15 times, and it goes into 5 12 times. So it could be 40, and it could be 60. This question's tried to trick you twice. Blank is a common factor of 80 and 120. So I can make 80 using 40, and I can make 120 using 40. I can make 120 using 60 but I cannot make 80 by counting in 60s. So this one must be 40, which means I can write 40 in here, get rid of 40 as an option, which means the only one left is 60. This was the ultimate question. This was the question that inspired this video. This was the question where I thought, okay, it's important we understand that rushing into an answer, although sometimes as we've seen in the first few questions, we can get away with it. There are going to be questions built to try and trap you in this situation. The test writers, did this on purpose. They purposely put two options in the first one where the first thing you came across would actually be the wrong one. It's testing your reasoning skills. So it's really important to understand what they're doing when they do this. There is one other question that kind of links, and I love these types of questions because it's all about rushing in and not necessarily using the first bit of information. So for example, in this question, we didn't just do the first number we found because that ended up being wrong. And this is a similar type question I see loads of children getting these wrong because they just look at the first bit of information, can't work anything out and get confused. Adam buys four pens and a ruler and pays 475 altogether. Now, this is a question that has two unknowns. We don't know how much the pen costs. We don't know how much the ruler costs. So at the minute, we cannot work out how much anything costs from this top bit of information. Sometimes children would be tempted to say 475. Um, I want to know how much the ruler costs. There are five things here. I'm just going to divide it by five. No, because that would mean the pen and the ruler have to cost the same thing. And we don't know that. We have two unknowns. We cannot rush into trying to solve something just off the first bit of information. We need to figure out how much this ruler costs. So we cannot work anything out from the top bit of information. So we're going to come back to it just like we did before. Jack buys two pens and pays £1.98 altogether. This is important. This is very, very important because now I know how much two pens cost. So two pens cost one ninety-eight. So I can actually work out how much four pens cost. I can do one ninety-eight multiplied by two. I get 16 in the ones with one exchanging over. I get 18 plus one is 19. Decimal comes down and we have two pounds, but I nearly forgot to add on my extra one. So it's gonna be three pounds 96. This is three pounds 96. So now, because I skipped the first bit of information, I didn't dive straight into it, I went to the second bit of information, which was actually helpful, I can now go back to the start. And I can figure out that it was £4.75 altogether. The pens were £3.96, so I'm going to take this cost off. Five take away six, we need to do some exchanging here, we get a nine. Six take away nine, again, some exchanging. 16 take away nine is going to give me a seven. 
So it costs 79 pence. And I nearly just put 7p. That would be going incorrect. Guys, be careful. Don't do what I'm doing. Do all the hard work and then copy it in incorrectly. The answer would be 79 pence. Well, there is no way we could have worked that out from the first bit of information. Don't dive straight in. Don't just assume and guess what you've got to do because the first bit of information must be the first thing I use, right? No, absolutely not. It's testing your understanding of the whole question and sometimes you have to go further down in order to then go back up as well. I've written a question for you. I'm actually going to move it so you can see it properly because my camera is in the way. So you're given six number cards and what I want you to do is use them once to fill in these uh, addition number sentences down the bottom. Remember what I said earlier, okay? Don't just do the first thing you see. Check how many options are there to make it correct. If there's more than one, come back to it because there'll be something later on which can only be made in one way and then you can unlock the question. I hope you found this useful, guys, and I'll see you again next time for another video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video. See ya.